Hey, this is Alex from Gretel. Today we're going to walk through using Gretel's APIs to create synthetic data from a CSV or a Pandas data frame. Let's jump right in. You can find the notebook that we're going to walk through here linked below. Um, we're going to go ahead and open it up in Colab, so Google's free notebook hosting service. From here, got a handy link. You can also follow the link that we posted below to launch this in Colab. This loaded the notebook up. We'll connect to a runtime, which allows us to start executing the code in the notebook. Really simple install here. All we have to do is install the Gradle client. So simple pip install here. We also need an API key, which allows us to interact with the API services. So while that's installing, we'll go ahead and log into the Gradle console, which is console.gradle.cloud. Go up here and grab a copy of our API key. Our API key here. And I'm going to go ahead and kick off the rest of this project while we talk through what's happening. First thing that we're going to do here is use the Python SDK, which interacts, uh, the Gretel Python SDK interacts with our API services. So the first thing we'll do is create a project. We're going to name it Synthetic Data. You can name it whatever you would like to. Now for the fun stuff. Um, we're going to pull down one of our template configs. So these configs uh, essentially define a set of neural network parameters that are used by our synthetic model based on the data that's been trained on. So here we can see that we went ahead, um, we downloaded the default configuration, which is a pretty sane configuration that should work for most data sets. You can browse other configurations by clicking on this link as well. And it will go ahead. The so next step um, is go ahead and loading our sample data set that we want to create a synthetic version of into a data frame. So here we can see we'll load up pandas, We'll define the path here. So we're gonna load this from S3, which you can load any local CSV file that you would like into your data frame. And we'll go ahead and preview that data frame. We're also going to save that CSV file out to a local file. So here we can see we're looking at a financial data set. It's about 5,000 rows um, and 15 columns. So it should be a nice challenge for the synthetic model to see if it can learn on this little data. Um, but we see age ranges, we see categorical data, like the work class that you're uh, employed in. Um, we see um, gender data, we see income data. So this is a really popular data set used in the machine learning world for predicting uh, income. We'll go ahead and save this file off to disk and then we'll use that to start training our model. Here you can see we're creating the model. Um, we are submitting it to the API service and telling the model to go ahead um, and train a, uh, a model um, using the Gretel Cloud. You can run this locally in your environment. Running the Gretel Cloud allows you to get by without having a GPU or needing to, uh, to uh, configure TensorFlow, CUDA, or the uh, underlying dependencies. Here we can see that the model uh, finished training. You see the accuracy here on the uh, both the test set and the validation set is quite good. So we're at 90% accuracy. Loss is pretty low. Typically loss anywhere under one uh, will indicate you've got a pretty good model. And we're going to head and use the model to generate 5,000 records. These 5,000 records we're going to use to profile the synthetic model and figure out how to do the job it's doing at creating synthetic data. Um, also, um, we will go ahead and create a report and we'll go ahead and take a look at that report next. Here is a version of our synthetic data frame. So this is the entirely artificial data set that was created by our model. You can see it mimics the input data um, very closely. Um, so you can see different age distributions, working class, um, the same type of fields that we came to expect when we were looking at the training data. The next question we have is how good of a job did the model do at retaining the insights, characteristics, and correlations from the original data set? So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at that. For that, we have the synthetic quality report, which we'll go through right now. Essentially what we're doing is throwing the kitchen sink from a statistical perspective, comparing the output of the model, those 5,000 records we generated, versus the input data, which is about 5,000 records we put in. Here you can see overall, we got an excellent score. Um, and the different uh, measures that we're taking a look at here to kind of assess the, uh, the correlations and the uh, distributions per field um, are holding up quite well. Um, from a privacy perspective, none of the training data was duplicated, so these are entirely new rows that were being created. Here we get an overview of every field, and there will be a nice deep dive that we can look at as we go deeper down on the report. This is my personal favorite to look at. So here when we look at the training and synthetic data correlations, um, what we are looking at here is uh, correlations that exist between each field. Um, so you obviously expect a, a strong correlation between uh, the same field going up. But we can see other cases here where um, a, an integer here that appears to be um, identifying the education is always the same. So a strong correlation between those fields. 
And we see uh, weaker correlations between things like uh, relationship and age, for example, or relationship and marital status, where we see nearly 50% correlation between the input data. What we're looking for here is we want to see that the synthetic data model is able to, as closely as possible, recreate the correlations that exist in the original data set. Another really handy view that I like is uh, using PCA. So PCA is a dimensionality reduction technique, um, favorite toolkit in the arsenal for data scientists. And what we'd look to, like to look at for here is essentially compressing those 15 columns and those 5,000 rows down into two different dimensions that we can look at um, and uh, through dimensionality reduction. And what we look for here is a similar shape between the synthetic data and the training data, similar size distribution um, of the different um, lines. So this looks quite good as well. From there, we can dive in on a field by field comparison. So, you know, given a particular percentage of um, or a categorical value for, for education, um, how many of these were recreated in the synthetic set versus how many of them um, existed in the original data set. And you want to see as close of a, uh, of a line as possible without having things obviously be exactly the same. It looks like the synthetic model, once again, learned this quite well. We see very similar but different distributions between the synthetic and the original training data. From there, we can use our model, and this last line here shows us a way to use the model to um, have our record generate as many more records as we want. So here, um, we are passing our model uh, request to generate another 100 records, um, which it went ahead and did very quickly. And we can load that as a, uh, uh, essentially load that, load that CSV directly from the API service in as a data frame and use our favorite data frame tools to work with it.